Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we'll be learning about the second moment of inertia. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the button below. In previous videos, we have learned about the significance of the area and location of the centroid for the section of an element and the overall behaviour of a structure. For example, a beam with a greater cross-sectional area will typically be able to take more load before deforming than a beam with a smaller area and knowing the location of the centroid is important for simplifying calculations. The second moment of inertia is an additional property that is important for understanding the behaviour of an element within a structure. Consider these two beams which can be modelled like so. They are both supported by a hinge support at one end and a roller support at the other end. Both beams are made out of the same concrete and have the same length, and the two beams also have the same rectangular cross-sectional area. However, the beam on the right is rotated 90 degrees such that it is flat. Now, if we were to apply an equal load to each beam halfway along the spans, the beams would deform like so. Even though the areas and the centroids of the two beams are the same, the beam on the left will deform less than the beam on the right. Or, you could say that the beam on the left can take more load before breaking than the beam on the right. We have just stated that this difference is not due to the areas or the locations of the centroids of the beams, so it is most likely as a result of the second moment of inertia. The second moment of inertia is a geometrical property of an area which measures how its points are distributed with regards to an arbitrary axis, and provides a measure of how efficiently the cross-sectional shape can resist bending caused by loading. If the area of the region is close to the arbitrary axis, there will be a smaller bending moment. Looking back at the example of our two beams, if we consider that the bending moment makes the section rotate along a horizontal axis, the area of the beam on the left is further away from the horizontal axis than the area of the beam on the right. Therefore, the second moment of inertia around the horizontal axis is greater for the beam on the left, resulting in a greater stiffness. Analytically, the second moment of inertia in relation to an axis is given by i equals the integral of d squared with respect to the area, where d is the distance of each point to the axis. The inertia around y, y is calculated using the distance to the arbitrary axis y, y, given by the coordinate along x, x. Therefore, more specifically, the second moment of inertia around y, y is given by i, y, y equals the integral of x squared with respect to the area and the second moment of inertia around xx is given by ixx equals the integral of y squared with respect to the area. As a simple example, let's calculate the second moment of inertia for the beam on the left-hand side from the example before, and let's calculate the second moment of inertia relative to a horizontal axis through the centroid, the x-axis as shown in the diagram. The rectangular section has a width of b and a height of h. For this, as the beam has a uniform cross-sectional area along its length, we will consider a length of dy. As we just saw, the second moment of area around a horizontal axis is given by ixx equals the integral of y squared with respect to the area. Substituting our variables into the equation, we get the second moment of inertia around the x-axis is equal to the integral of y squared times b with respect to y, with boundary limits of y equals negative h over 2, and y equals h over 2. The integral of y squared with respect to y is y cubed divided by 3. So ixx is equal to b times y cubed divided by 3 from y equals negative h over 2 to y equals h over 2. Substituting in our boundary limits, we get that the second moment of inertia around the x-axis equals b h cubed divided by 12. Just like with the first moment of area, the second moment of inertia has the property where the second moment of inertia for multiple compound shapes can be added and subtracted to determine the second moment of inertia for a complex shape. However, this can only be done if all the second moment of inertias are relative to the same axis. For this, we will introduce the x prime axis, denoted by x apostrophe. The x prime axis is parallel to the horizontal centroidal axis, xg, and for this example is a distance of d from the axis xg. The second moment of inertia relative to the axis x prime can be computed using the second moment of inertia relative to a parallel axis through the centroid xg, 
as ix prime is equal to ixg plus a times d squared, where ix prime is the second moment of inertia relative to the axis x prime, ixg is the second moment of inertia relative to the centroidal axis xg, a is the area of the region, and d is the distance between axis xg and x prime. And this concept is called the parallel axis theorem. From this, we can make a couple of observations. That the area, A, is always positive, and D squared will also always be positive. So we can conclude that because of this, for any region, the second moment of inertia relative to the centroidal axis will always be smaller than the second moment of inertia relative to a different parallel axis, because Ix prime will increase as D increases. We can prove this by considering our example again. We will use the parallel axis theorem to calculate the second moment of inertia for the rectangular section, relative to the x prime axis at the base of the rectangle. Substituting our variables into the equation where ix prime equals ixg plus a times d squared, we get ix prime equals bh cubed divided by 12 plus b times h times h over 2 all squared, which equals bh cubed divided by 3. Therefore, we can see that for this example, the second moment of inertia relative to the x prime axis is four times larger than the second moment of inertia relative to the centroidal axis, xg. As we have previously seen for the areas and locations of centroids for compound shapes, the second moment of inertia relative to the horizontal and vertical centroidal axis is common knowledge for rectangles, triangles and circles. For a rectangle with a base of b and a height of h, the second moment of inertia relative to the horizontal centroidal axis, xg, is equal to b times h cubed divided by 12. And the second moment of inertia relative to the vertical centroidal axis, yg, is equal to b cubed times h divided by 12. For a triangle with a base of b and a height of h, the second moment of inertia relative to the horizontal centroidal axis, xg, is equal to b times h cubed divided by 36, and the second moment of inertia relative to the vertical centroidal axis, yg, is equal to b cubed times h divided by 36. Finally, for a circle with a radius of r, the second moment of inertia relative to the horizontal centroidal axis, xg, is also equal to the second moment of inertia relative to the vertical centroidal axis, yg, and these are equal to pi times r to the power of 4 divided by 4. Although these equations are common knowledge, they can be tricky to commit to memory and can be found online or in data sheets anyway, so it is more important to understand how to use these rather than committing them to memory. In the next video, we will solidify what we have learnt today by applying this theory to determine the second moment of inertias for the following complex regions. And to recap what we have learnt today, we introduced the concept of the second moment of inertia and its significance in the behaviour of a structure, learning how to determine the second moment of inertia for a region relative to a centroidal axis, and we finished by introducing the parallel axis theorem and seeing how we can use this to compute the second moment of inertia for complex regions. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.